speaker hmm? okay uh, so i'll start that and uh, by that time few more will join and we can go ahead okay yeah yeah so uh, yes i can see some uh, 2022 students here participants uh, very good evening all um, and uh, ravi very good evening to you also and uh, let me uh, take this opportunity to introduce uh, to you our biodiversity club um as we have spoken very I mean frequently on phone and we have met and you also know about biodiversity club of the university but as i told you before also this is very new initiative uh, in 2018 uh, biodiversity club of sembasis university got established <clears throat> mainly for three uh, important pillars on that uh, which we work on that is uh, scientific systematic documentation of biodiversity of university campus then awareness education of uh, students and uh, staff um, even uh, ground staff of the campus and third is conservation so these three things we are slowly you know uh, working on these three pillars and starting and uh, you know getting in all biodiversity related work uh, into one direction uh, and having said that uh, sibasis university umbrella has more than 30 institutes under its umbrella and today uh, those students who will be joining us are from various background and various uh, different programs Uh, our um, uh, organizing team is from culinary arts as i told you then there are students from media from uh, sports science from health science from computer studies from geo informatics uh, from business management ug pg then law uh, then design uh, even media ug pg students are there so yes they, these are uh, various programs students are from even photography so i saw i i are from pune or like these institutes are all over maharashtra uh, it's uh, we have campuses in noida hyderabad okay. bangalore nasik uh, and nagpur and oh. pune so they are uh, spread across uh, india so that's it and um, uh, today our session is completely you know unique kind of session because this is our first hands on session otherwise whatever we have started through uh, this biodiversity sunday special session uh, since september all are mostly in uh, ppt presentation kind of interactive session but all of the they are these are uh, speakers are from uh, wildlife conservation and um, art uh, art but but which is related to uh, again wildlife so with this uh, i um, means welcome you and then i hand over to saumya to uh, introduce you to all our participants and then you can take it over okay thanks shilpa thanks it's great to know about what symbiosis is doing yeah so soumya you can go ahead chama so um good evening everyone welcome to symbiosis by diversity cells new session i hope you are all fresh and fully prepared for the session today we have mr ravi jambekar with us he's an ecologist studying the effects of habitat fragmentation and habitat area of butterflies specifically in western ghats you will see how this session is going to be different from the ones that is held that are held in past he'll be conducting a hands on workshop on botanical illustration in which we all will learn to observe venations and structure of the leaves followed by making a botanical art out of it the material required for it for the participation was shared in the invite email which included a pencil eraser thick painting paper watercolors waste cloth paint brushes of size 0 1 and 2 i hope everyone's ready with the stencils which was also attached in the email and now i'll hand over to mr ravi jambekar thank you thank you somya i'll quickly uh, give like a short presentation describing um, the scientific part of my work to you all and uh, then we can begin the hands on session 
So I'll share my screen. So good evening, everybody. Uh, as uh, Shilpa and Soumya introduced uh, uh, me to all of you, I am a field ecologist and I have finished my PhD from uh, Indian Institute of Science. And I did a postdoc with uh, Dr. Harini Nagendra from Azim Premji uh, University, looking at the effects of uh, urbanization on bird populations in India. Uh, so I had the most amazing time chasing butterflies, observing birds and like observing all the plants and uh, trees that are there in the Northern Western Ghats in states of Goa, Maharashtra and uh, Karnataka. So I worked on butterfly communities in a very special kind of an ecosystem. So this ecosystem was um, like a mixture of grasslands and forests and laterite plateau grasslands, uh, which are there only in the Northern Western Ghats. So usually one studies butterflies, birds or animals only in forests, but the grasslands, um, which is an important ecosystem in India is usually overlooked. So I tried to focus on these grassland forest complexes um, and um, what effects uh, these habitats can have on the butterfly communities in the Western Ghats. So uh, since you are like uh, from diverse background, I will play this uh, video. It is from my field site to give you an idea what a typical day on field looks like. So these, the grasslands that you see here are the laterite plateau grasslands. And there are these clumps of forests which are there uh, on these grasslands. And of course, butterflies, dragonflies, everything are like everywhere. And we go to these forests and record all the butterflies that we see on our path and also their numbers. So to get an idea about their population estimates. Um, and sorry. Yeah, and um, along with that, we also do some behavioral studies. That is, uh, we follow uh, these butterflies. So for my PhD, I focused only on one butterfly species for the behavior part. It was called the common four ring. Uh, and the name of this butterfly comes from the round eye spots that you see on the wing. There are four eye spots there on the wing. And I used to follow these butterflies uh, in the grasslands and see how much time they spend feeding um, uh, which plants they feed on, how they move, do they come back from one patch to another. And uh, we used to mark these butterflies with a permanent marker. It, it is completely safe because these butterflies would like live for about uh, three weeks to one month. That is their like lifespan, lifespan in the wild. And uh, so each of these butterflies had a unique ID uh, and uh, we would like the next day when we would go in these um, habitats, we would catch uh, these butterflies again to see how many of them are still there in that habitat patch, how many of them have moved to another habitat patch. And we found that uh, these butterflies are very smart. So they are um not making random decisions they are not just going anywhere in the forest they are choosing uh the habitat patches which have the maximum number of flowers and um the larval host plant that is grass so they they tended to avoid only patches that have grass or uh, the, uh, the patches that have no nectar because there is no uh, gain uh, energetically, but cost-wise, it is very um, 
detrimental for them to move to all these patches so we found that when they find a patch that has both grasses and nectar they'll stick to these uh, patches and um, so while doing all this field work i would uh, always be observing the plants and uh, the flowers that are there because everything as you know is connected so the butterflies feed on these nectar plants the plants that they lay eggs on are also uh, like part of these forests and grasslands and in the evening i used to get some free time and i started sketching uh, these uh, leaves which are uh, like life size uh, depictions of uh, what we see in nature and like slowly slowly i mm, i thought that uh, why not start sketching the leaves of these different tree species that are there uh, so that we can highlight the biodiversity of plants that is there in these forests because usually butterflies birds tigers like all these big mammals uh, they receive a lot of attention but plants don't um get so much attention so i started uh, doing this as a hobby and um uh, i also used to sketch uh, like uh, some memories that i see on field so as you know northern western ghats are like a biodiversity hot spot uh, in india and there are a lot of species uh, that call it home so in goa we used to see hornbills uh, blue mormon which is the second largest butterfly in india flying geckos uh, the gliding frog so like i made this collage uh, of all the memories that i had from my field station and now slowly uh, what i'm trying to do is uh, use art to ravi Yes. Uh, excuse me. Can you uh, just uh, you know ask students in your previous uh, uh, painting? Uh, can uh, can you point out those species because uh, it's a wonderful uh, painting and students may not have got you know that eyesight to you know. Uh, I should point out. Uh, if you can. Uh, where is the marker thing? because it's a uh, especially a blue mormon then flying uh, drop draco uh can i Students? use that annotate thing to i don't know <laughs> like which we completely discourage usually because <laughs> students they keep on doing for other uh, you know speakers so this is uh, huh. this is the hornbill yes uh it's one of the charismatic species and highly endangered species that is there in the western ghats great hornbill uh, this is yeah great pied hornbill this is uh the flying gecko so actually it's not a flying uh thing it glides from one tree to another and uh, it's very pretty it has uh the ribs of these geckos expand uh when they fly and it has a bat like um uh, skin fold that helps them glide uh this is the gliding frog again that this is also endemic to western ghats and yeah this this is uh, the blue mormon yeah thanks it's not uh, going ahead i don't know why take out you can close again and then start otherwise okay uh no 
Shubankar, uh, do you have any idea how to go about it? Um, Ma'am, I, I guess he, he just needs to change the slide. Anyways, only one slide is remaining. So, uh, can you see it? Yes, Ma yes. Uh, the last one. Yeah, so now uh, that's what like I'm trying to do uh, is like uh, try to merge both art and science and uh, like uh, create more awareness uh, about the science that we are doing uh, through art. So maybe highlight uh, a few species that are important or the research that we do, explain it more uh, graphically than just uh, through the statistics or the scientific language that is there and that's why uh, like today i decided that i'll focus on the uh, botanical illustration part of it uh, since i have been painting leaves but i uh, like this is just one part of it uh, there are a lot of aspects uh, to botanical illustration and I'm pretty sure Nirupa Rao would have covered it uh, in her previous session if you guys had attended it. Um, yes, yes. So, um, so just to give you a flavor of it, I like, I'll tell you what it's used for. So mostly when some scientist de describes a new species of plants or animals, you have to make these accurate uh, uh, illustrations of plants or animals with the various parts um, in focus and that is sometimes very difficult to do using photographs because uh, like some insect might have um, like a leg that is hiding behind its abdomen or there is a venation uh, pattern that is unique to a plant species and using illustrations you can highlight these features of a species and it goes uh, along with the paper uh, that has been written scientifically that's why it is still not out of fashion and people have been using since the time of darwin or even before that so yeah so let's uh, begin the workshop and i'll just highlight um, like we won't be able to finish the entire painting, but I'll, I'll guide you through the process that what I look for and what features one has to see when, while painting. Okay. I'll just switch the screens now. So sorry for the lag, but, um, So meantime, uh, I would like to ask uh, all these participants who have joined, uh, anyone uh, who is uh, doing already art or, uh, you know, doing, uh, okay, it means paintings and uh, you are hardcore into that kind of art. No, it's okay. Even I am not, uh, you know, hardcore artist. But uh, we are all here because somehow uh, this session interests us, and uh, for me, it is related to nature. Hmm? So that's fine. But if anyone is here, uh, they can just say hi that you are into art. Ainik, you you draw? I'll start drawing. Yeah. Uh, I can't see the comments, so maybe if somebody asks a question or something, then Chilpa, you can... Yes, yes, I will do. And... Um, can you see the screen? Yes. Like, we... It's clear, no? Like, sort of. Means it's light only. So it's no, clear. it's not clear, but we can see the screen. Yeah, clear as in like it's a very faint uh, mm -hmm. uh, Sketch. outline, that's why. Okay. Yeah, so, so this is a people leaf and uh, um, it is one of the simple uh, 
simple as in um, in botanical terms the leaf margin is uh, uh, like not serrated or um, jagged so it has a smooth margin and it's a single leaf so it's called a simple leaf so if you have observed gulmohar leaves or tamarind leaves um, they are like uh, so the mid rib is uh attached to the main this thing and there are small small leaflets and mm -hmm. the people thing is a simple leaf yeah. so what i uh, when i'm doing these illustrations first i make a very faint uh background uh sorry a uh, sketch with pencil and the first thing i start filling in are the veins and so this is uh, like how my color palette uh, looks. Uh, I have already taken out a few colors that I usually use. And since these are watercolors, they don't dry. Uh, so I can just add a little bit of water to them and start painting whenever I need. Uh, so this leaf has got like really light uh, mid rib. So the first thing I start painting is the venation because that is um, like that gives you some idea of how to go about painting the other parts and uh, even if you paint over it it um, like doesn't uh, like it stays at least for a few layers. So one tip uh, is that you can mix uh, like if it's dark color venation then you can just start painting over it and it doesn't go but this is light in color so I have chosen this uh, yellow. what size brush you are using Ravi I am using uh, like one uh, number brush for this and as close as possible to the uh, like the color in the picture, I'm trying to uh, paint the veins. And so there are two techniques you can use while doing this. You can either choose uh, to paint over it or like keep these things uh untouched so since i'm using what if you mix little bit of acrylic color in the watercolor then this thing stays but i have not used that i'm just using the watercolor for now so i'm going to carefully paint around this thing and if you observe the vein structure for this thing so it is not like how we how we draw maybe like if we are making a rough sketch that if this is the mid rib uh, like it is not like this so each you get it right so mm -hmm. the the arrangement is like very random sometimes they are joining from one point sometimes they are joining from like different points so that is really important because some plants have um, some species can be identified based on the venation also so yeah so what i do is i paint these veins first in a very like light color I also would like to request students, uh, you can ask questions and even discuss uh, whatever your doubts, you know, uh, your point of view during this session. It's not like that, that you can't speak. So this is completely interactive session where discussion with Ravi is uh, welcomed by completely. And he want you all to talk so you can keep on discussing and talking. Ravi, uh, you are using brown and yellow. 
Yeah, I am using a yellow ochre uh -huh. and a yellow. Okay. For this. Sorry, I forgot to tell what color. And I use uh, this German brand uh, watercolors because the pigments are uh, more vibrant uh, as compared to other uh, colors that I have used. So that's why uh, I stick to using this brand. Yeah, so I'm I'm not going I'm I won't complete the whole Venetian thing, but you get an idea, right? You have to like that's how I go about uh, filling in all the details of the primary veins. So these are all called as primary veins. Um, whatever these small, small things that will come uh, that you see on the leaf, they are secondary veins. So these are all primary veins that I painted first so that um, all of us get an idea of what to like, how the structure is there. And now I'm using a um, uh, three number brush to start giving the leaf coat. So here, like this part of the leaf uh, is like dark in color. Uh, it is, it, it has dried up uh, sort of as compared to other parts. So I'm using a mixture of uh, burnt sienna and um, a darker shade of brown to give the first layer. So when you're doing watercolors, you work in layers. Uh, so the more coat of paint that you give uh, over, uh, the layers, the more uh, darker it becomes and the more vibrant also it becomes. So... Ravi, when you uh, means uh, like very immature uh, artist or Disney people like us, yeah. uh, the names of uh, colors you say, can you tell uh, those colors in normal language also? Anything close by? Like you it's say... It's basically shade of brown. So brown. Bo both of while seeing, so, I can I mean, I can understand so, that it is brown, but this I'm uh, using a mixture of this brown uh, and this brown. Okay. Just to give you an idea about the shades, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, so basically this is like. Uh, I start by giving one coat and um, I'm not being really careful right now because like even if the ven venation goes away, we can paint over it again. And, and I'm using a lot of water for this so the first layer usually i use like a lot of water so this this is called as giving a wash in the like whatever watercolor terms so i give a very fine watery wash to the entire leaf and so one thing you have to keep in mind while doing this. So now suppose this area like in the photo has green. So you will have to give the green color ka wash uh, in the beginning. Because if you try to paint over yellow, it will not have that 
uh, shade. So I'll just like this is too dark, uh, but yeah. So basically, I keep that green thing like very roughly. Uh, this thing here, so that we also don't uh, forget that it's there, and then continue giving uh, the wash to the other parts. And you can merge it if it's like not a very stark um, uh, what to say, like. Uh, if it doesn't have a very stark uh, edge, then you can merge it. So, so, so now if you take this area, I've taken a little bit water. I have the brush is wet, and then slowly. So see, can you see it? It is like the edges are getting very smooth. So, this I'm going to keep it this way for now and then continue painting uh, the other things so another thing to keep in mind is that you can make the colors darker anytime you want but the lighter areas it's better to leave them as light as possible because you won't be able to make changes to them uh, in watercolor medium and in watercolor medium you don't use white so if uh, there is some highlight that is there you can choose to leave it without any wash color so so now i have like almost completed half of the leaf and um, for the yellows I am mixing this shade of yellow and this so it's lemon it's cadmium yellow and uh, yellow ochre I'm using a combination of these two to to give the first whatever layer and I see that in this part of the leaf there is little bit of a shadow and it's slightly dark so I'm adding little bit of um, red and brown and I'll merge it um, here now so that uh, like it gives a shadow effect later on in the painting and so now i think this is dry so i'll give another coat of layer and now as you see it is becoming it is already becoming much much darker uh, than before so instead of giving a dark uh, dark coat in the beginning if you give these thin coats in the subsequent layers it gives a better effect sort of any questions not yes. yet um excuse me can i ask something you can ask directly no need of excuse okay me can all I right directly... all right ma'am um i'm just having um i'm using these colors for the first time i'm sorry for sounding like an amateur but i'm having a hard time spreading the color so should i put a layer of water first as well will that be better can you share your screen i cannot like then i can see what is happening Okay. Um, it's like mm. 
Just a minute. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I think instead of uh, using water, we can make it more light with water only, na? Before. So, so there are two techniques. Uh, so, one is the wet on wet uh, kind of technique where you give mm. a wash. That's uh -huh. what we have been taught in school, right? You give, like, you paint uh, the entire paper with water first, mm -hmm. yeah. and then add uh, these layers so that gives the typical watercolor effect to it that it it spreads all these colors and this technique that i am like for the first layer i am making um, like i am using slightly more water but in the later layers i mostly use very little water and that is called a dry brush technique so that gives you more control over the colors that you are using and the fine textures that you are using. So here I can just show you what happens on a wet on wet technique. So suppose here I have put a lot of water, this part. And if I now, it spreads like this. Okay. Uh, yes. This is a lot of water and the brush, the paper also is wet and the brush also has a lot of water. But now if I have very little water, then I can do this. It doesn't spread. Okay. Yes. So you can you have to use a combination of both these techniques. But uh, so that will slightly when you start doing more and more you will only understand what is working where so basically in this area um, here you have to use lot of water and spread that green but here in the bottom since it has a very particular texture i have to use very less water so that it doesn't spread and i get dots like these yeah, I got it. I got it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so if you have any questions, keep on asking. So because that will be better for others also to understand what is happening. So now I'm going to just give these multiple layers uh, over it very quickly. See how much, like, can you see the color difference uh, that is taking place? Now here I have, it's a single layer, but now when I add yellow, it becomes, it immediately becomes more vibrant. Uh, so that is, that is an advantage of using um, dry the, brush. Dry, so the layer thing so that the colors become vibrant the more more layers you give the more it will become vibrant sort of So usually for me to make these leaves, it takes about uh, eight to nine hours because I let it dry a little bit after giving a few layers and then add the details. Uh, and they are mostly like uh, bigger than how to say the size bigger than your palm of your hand so yeah so just to give a reference about the size so suppose i 
I have added some wrong color over here by mistake. Then I can just use tissue paper or cloth while it's wet to make the correction. Uh, suppose like if I added this over here and I realize that in actual leaf it is not there, then I immediately wipe it off. It becomes slightly difficult to make any changes after it has dried up. So, yeah. Uh, and if you observe these leaves, mostly the, so I'm switching to a smaller brush now uh, to show you one thing that these veins, if you have to make them pop out, instead of painting white over them, what I do is I paint a little bit dark. Uh, brown or black around them and that uh, in the end like leads them to popping out of the picture and usually these gaps that are there around the veins have the shadows so doing that also creates it adds depth uh, to the entire picture so I once like I give a few layers, I give one layer of shadow sort of to the sides of the wings so that it is it gives that 3D effect uh, to it. So here I by mistake have put more black. It won't go away completely, but let's hope it doesn't stay like this. Anyone has anything to add? Like Are they interested in botanical art? Have they seen botanical art of other people or something like that? So uh, from which year actually you started botanical art, Ravi? I started, uh, I started painting in 2017 and okay. but, but I, I would always like I was always interested in painting uh, okay. but I started doing it more regularly since 2017 so I would do on and off but not um, very regularly as such okay So, uh, Allah, apart from your uh, means, uh, doctorate in uh, means, uh, this bot uh, yeah, uh, wildlife, wildlife yeah. and ecology, um, right now, even this uh, art and botanical art uh, is working as a profession for you? So, I'm getting a few commissions and all, but not. Like I'm not doing it full time still because mm -hmm. I have my re research going on as well. But I accept like one or two commissions or something per month or something like that. If it's a big project, then just maybe one for three months or um, about that time. And mm -hmm. side by side uh, do research and writing and all these things as well. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what can you tell about uh, you know research and field work and ecology and art as a profession as a earning major for you know people uh, or anyone if, you, if they wanted to explore. So, if you do like pure ecology and you are interested in doing more research. 
uh, only then most of the people like to be in academic so they apply for these professorship positions uh, or uh, even in government institutes like botanical survey of india zoological survey of india as research scientists so uh, so if you do a phd in ecology or even masters in ecology zoology botany so you have these things as job openings um in art actually i don't know because uh, like still this is a very new field in india as such uh um, mm. where they are trying to merge um uh, science and art and like integrate more of art into science um so it's still a new field so mostly the projects or whatever like the professional this thing that comes mm-hmm. uh, is like freelance projects or illustrating for books children's oh. books or um, like some uh coffee table book so that is the most of it uh but uh there is n- like mm, no niche as such that uh, mm-hmm. has been uh, carved out yet which is actually a good thing because it is picking up all across the world and like we are also trying to do that so okay. yeah so now what i'll do is with a very dry brush i will try to paint some of the secondary veins so basically this is the idea behind it that you keep on giving uh, these light color washes till you are happy with the shades of the leaf and once that is done so now i have given only two or three washes i think it will require uh three three more washes at least so i am not going to do that but i will show you how to how i do the venation thing so uh suppose this is the primary vein and the other veins that are there in this part are darker so i'll paint it using a very uh like zero number brush you're using then, black color dark brown only dark brown yeah so it's almost like black but not exactly black uh but to show you guys i'm using this because otherwise it the details might not show up um and yeah so then i very slowly carefully i make these patterns that i see so it is actually very easy to see it on a actual leaf actual leaf because it gives slightly more freedom in mm-hmm. photos usually these details get lost but i'm just using whatever i can see uh here and it has it has this very interesting squarish hexagonal pattern that the cells have so a very light this thing i can i'm doing this if you somehow if you feel that it is it is too dark then you can like add a little bit water and dab a cloth or tissue paper and then that texture will go away if you feel that you have like not done it properly or it's looking too 
artificial but this i am using a very very less water thin brush and uh, like slightly darker colors So Ravi, uh, tell us uh, about uh, how your drawing means. When I met you for the first time, uh, I fell in love with uh, this your dry leaf painting. So yeah. you you were the first person I met who who was you know who were drawing all and out only dry leaves, and that's yeah. why I, I also have these uh, paintings at my home. If students can see, see, I had uh, even Instagram पे भी मैंने शेयर किया था. So this is a beautiful painting. I have three of them. So how it started your your uh, you know affinity towards dry so, leaves? I wanted to, like I wanted to paint in the evenings or something after field work, as I told. Um, but I there was no internet, uh, no phone connectivity. uh there in the field station uh so i couldn't really have a reference image or like look at photos of birds or something uh or even like even if i take photographs it was really difficult because electricity was also very intermittent it would go um, uh during the evenings and all so um, i thought like how to make best use of the time uh and yet has something to look at and paint because i didn't want to do a lot of memory drawing also because it is too difficult to make like compose a picture um uh, with like no reference images nothing just do these memory things so i started getting one leaf uh back from the field every day i came Mm, back from field so uh there is something to look at and you have it and i wanted to do it quickly as quickly as possible because the leaf dries up um quite fast so every evening 2 3 hours i would spend uh like painting the leaf sketching the leaf and stuff and in the morning uh after like before going to field or something i would add in the venetian details and um other things so like it would take 6 to 7 hours to finish so yeah so that that's how i started actually painting the leaves um, because i just wanted to have something to look at and paint Yeah. Can you also tell us about your uh, uh, bird uh, rescue things? Uh, you know, uh, students. Uh, I would like to tell you very means it's a not funny thing, but it's funny serious thing. Uh, Ravi is always you know uh, gets attraction uh, by injured birds or you know even animals. They get attracted to Ravi, and Ravi keeps on you know uh, helping them. Uh, so how uh, very uh, means you are not trained to do that but uh, very tiny birds like tailor bird i have seen sun birds and uh, you successfully have reared them and how how come you are with that magical uh, hand in bird rescue uh, i don't know magical or anything but i was uh, like always interested like i always had some pets like cats dogs um, while growing up pigeons and uh, uh what happened was like uh, slowly slowly people started knowing that i keep these pets at home or whatever i rescue them so a lot of people started calling me for rescues and like if it's a injured bird and they don't know what to do they would uh, call me and uh, tell me like if i can take it for a few days and then i slowly started um, like 
reading more about what they eat and what can be given to them in captivity uh, like if it's a fruit eating bird it's a insect eating bird then what should be given and also slowly slowly with experience um, i got the hang hang of it and uh, like now in isc i get a lot of rescue calls uh, by like a lot of people and uh, that's how i have been like nurturing that hobby as well yeah which is the hardest uh, uh, difficult rescue you have done in terms of a tiny small bird i felt the sunbird rescue was quite difficult in the sense uh because it's very hyper it has a very high metabolic rate and uh, <laughs> like it keeps on feeding every few minutes and it requires sugar water um like a combination of sugar water and insects um uh, and so many insects are so difficult to get for us because the parents like feed on spiders and all in the canopy but we cannot like get so many of them so that was really difficult to like raise it uh till like adulthood where it can go and forage for itself um so what i did was i uh, these termites or the wing dance that come out no during monsoons uh, mm. i collected a lot of them and kept them in the freezer and uh every day i would remove little bit of it thaw it and feed that thing to the sunbird chick and uh that's how like i managed to get it to the adult stage and uh, then it started feeding on its own catching spiders going out on flowers nectaring and all and, and coming back come... to you <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah but, so that... but at the end it flew away yes it stopped coming after a few months wonderful few was... months yeah 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 it was coming uh, for like almost 4 5 months oh my god yeah so actually with painting this is it if you have any more questions then i can answer that or like maybe give you how some tips on how to do it if you have anything those who are doing do they have any questions this venation part uh, looks simple but it's not that simple <laughs> yeah that that takes some like i have also done very randomly right now but that's what i wanted to show you that you use a dry brush and like make these small hexagonal diagonal diagonal whatever cells that you see and if you think it's too dark then you put another wash or you can put another wash coat of color so then it goes away like if you think it's too dark and it is not matching the natural color then you do it but that comes slightly with more uh practice and also like observing uh it in more detail sort of um yeah 
So, am I audible? Yes. Um, so, I have tried a rough drawing because I forgot the color faces at home. I'm sorry, the watercolors at home. Um, but could you please look at the screen and tell me how I could get a more defined style structure if this is right? One okay. Second. So, maybe you can, what you can do is, uh, like, it is not uh, continuous, right? And uh, there are a lot of breaks, sort of, in the venation. Uh, so, if you make, because these things are continuous, um, sort of, in a natural leaf. So, if you can work on that. Also, other thing, what you have done is, uh like suppose this is uh wait i'll just move the camera a little bit this is the mid rib you have done this kind of a structure so it is not actually like this if you very closely observe first of all it is much more thinner and At the edge of the leaf, it is one second. Uh, at the edge of the leaf, it is it turns like a yo, it's not working. It is more round rather than ending in edges. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is happening like this so these little little things if you change then it will start looking more natural yeah uh, yeah so if you see here it is not ending very abruptly it is more like this with other joints to the other way yeah all right i understand so thank you thanks no problem anyone else yes sir um, who is it like i can't see am i visible what what is your name aryan rastogi sir ah yes yes i can see yes sir so i have made that leaf that you have represented actually sir uh, that color variations that you have shown that somewhere it's a little bit green yellow and yeah. uh, getting rotten from the downside so sir yes. <laughs> i tried using different colors but in my picture it has gone completely like matlab it's not looking like a leaf actually like it's looking something good but it's not looking like a leaf it's like a colorful picture of something i love like it's a, it has gone in turn into so, something so yeah so what you did was uh wait one second i'll just show it on this other you can can you see my video yeah no yes i can see that so what you did was if the it's green over here you did something like this while painting yes. but if you would have taken suppose more yellow you just have to merge it little bit so so suppose it was a mixture of yellow ochre then if you merge it like this then it won't look like that band okay so you used little bit less water there that's why you got these bands but if you add if you would have added slightly more water while painting then you wouldn't see such bands so okay 
I think you did this. You let it. You let it dry, and yeah. then you tried to. I just didn't blend that color. Like, मतलब. Yeah. So, थोड़ा सा ज़्यादा पानी लेके. You have hmm. to do this. अच्छा. Okay, sir. So I think Ravi, this uh, water uh, mixing uh, rightly, and then before drying it, making it, uh, you know, that because मेरा भी वैसे ही हुआ है, all bands. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, now I can see how uh, means very easily. You means first you uh, while showing Aryan, uh, you also had drawn those bands, but very yeah. easily you merge them, merge them yeah. all. Yeah. Also, the other the two things that both of you might have done is taken a lot of dry color. अच्छा so it it was little bit drier uh, than the usual water colors so you used it like poster colors or maybe you took you used poster colors and you did this and you let it dry so that's why those bands came uh but if you would have used less color and more water then it becomes easier to merge so instead of so you get the uh, like little bit you get no how intense uh, yeah 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 that yeah so i have mixed lot of water only in my palette here okay okay so it is this consistency uh -huh. like you get no it's almost translucent uh -huh. and then i do this so then merging becomes very easy so mm. now i take yellow it still goes if i take brown also it will still merge there mm -hmm. right 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 so it is less basically less color and more water for the first few layers or how many ever layers you are happy with mm -hmm. and dry colors for the later ones like for shadows veins okay okay other details you use that so now this will not merge that easily see now you are getting this band kind right of right right thing. yeah that's why and i usually use a 300 gsm uh paper um like there is a bustro brand fabriano brand so their papers are generally good and you can basically the 300 gsm thing means that you can add more number of layers if you use a normal paper like if you take a a4 sheet paper like that is the printing paper suppose and you will try to give water like apply water you will get these grains mm. see the white 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 spots so if you give more layers over it it will not absorb that easily and you will see those white white specks so basically that 300 gsm 250 gsm is the thickness of paper and it absorbs more layers this is like a normal paper and it it gives this grainy feeling sort of to it that's why you should use a thick paper yeah After when he told like uh, told it how it's done like using the water where are the parts I just use it like like it got a little better like मतलब better from before like after using the water even after it has got like yeah I can see it so basically you merged it well yes, guess, so guess, that's uh, what was lacking that first of all you had used a thick a thick coat of paint and. Uh, yeah now it's much better 
now if you add more yellow like after it dries don't no, add it now then okay, it, then you will not see those bands also maybe later on like you might be able to get a plain looking texture okay sir yeah yeah this is much this is so nice yeah yeah i can't hear you shilpa so now this side i am making like the one you told this side yeah uh. yeah and this is still fine even if you see bands at this stage it's still fine when you add other coats of yellow brown over it they will disappear subsequently yeah. other students who are doing can you show you also somya or aine oh this is very nice what vidya has done i can see acha okay yeah she has done a very good blending no bands have come at all thank you nan good day bro anybody else has any questions or making some difficulty while making nobody has any more questions anyone else uh, we would like to see aapne bhi kya kya kiya hai ma'am right now i'm just watching the process uh, i can, i will share my picture after this session okay problem so ravi uh, in your painting uh, those uh, brown dots how you made it can you show it once again yes uh, the one uh, the uh, as a merge hua hua brown color aur usme jo dark dots hai wo dono bhi aap us so first i merged it i added a lot of like i added uh, a lot of water and put brown uh color so then it merged and the dots i made with a very 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 less water and dry brush so they are not spreading but if i add it to a wet whatever first if i add water and then add here then it will spread but if i use less water and put a dot over there then it will not spread yeah
and this has that the margin has that sort of brown texture also mm -hmm. so i have used a little bit of dark brown and light brown and like try to give that edge mm -hmm. yeah so, yeah and then after it's all dry then i have painted these dots okay 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 got it yeah okay thanks so i think if anyone has question they can ask otherwise uh, we can go towards the end of the session and if ravi wants to add something and uh, we would definitely like to continue uh, ravi we will have more sessions like this because this is like a basic session we had today so yeah. at the end of the session if you want to uh, you know do your final thing you can go ahead no i don't have any Bad. Okay. Uh, can do you have anything? Uh, means any of your uh, more uh, paintings to show? Just few yeah. of them, if you have. Sure. Do you know? Excuse me, sir. Ravi, are you there? Yes, yes. I'm just getting the painting. Okay, okay, okay. And yeah. so this, uh, this one is watercolor only, which I did uh, recently. Ravi, uh, I had seen this on Instagram. I thought it's a photo. No, no, it is painting. Oh my God! I saw this. I thought that it's a photo, and it's very small only. You can see it is like about size of my hand. Um, I have made only small, small ones very recently because, uh, like, uh, it's much easier to handle. This is the caterpillar of southern birdwing that I painted. Yeah. Mm. this one i am making for a children's book uh, it's a book on birds uh, so i'm making like a few images of these birds sort of and of course i'm uh, going to like this is the basic uh, thing that i make and then i'm slowly using a combination of digital art and like the traditional hand painted thing mm -hmm. so i transfer it uh, to photoshop and then like add some background or some other details this is of a like a bumblebee that i had painted oh, fantastic yeah beautiful mostly small ones only yeah but uh, so i uh, i make uh, these small ones and then i make the whole picture in the like if i can share my screen then i'll show you something that i means in digital picture then you make it uh, the whole thing yeah one second i'll get it on desktop okay so uh, i think those who have attended today's session uh, uh, i think more than uh, there were more than 30 35 students but uh, now uh, some of them they have left but ravi we will definitely have you uh, for more sessions again yes and uh, even for me uh, it was a really wonderful thing that just in one hour how uh, you know we learn to at least you know handle uh, colors uh, to you uh, see yeah. uh, nature in different uh, mood completely so thanks thanks atan uh, thank you no problem 
Sir, Anitej has a question for you. Okay. Uh, he's asking, how did you ensure that your interference for study purposes not pose a change in the movement pattern of the butterflies? What? What? I didn't get the question. How did I achieve? Uh, how did you ensure that your interference for uh, study purposes not pose a change ah, yes. in the movement patterns of the butterflies? So, uh, I would uh, maintain a distance of about uh, four to five meters from the butterfly so that it is it is not disturbed uh, by my movement or my presence. Um, and I had done some preliminary observations on these butterflies before that if you, how much, like how close can you go to an individual before it gets disturbed, it starts flying. Uh, so keeping all these things into consideration, I would stand about four to five meters minimum sometimes more also and observe from a distance where this individual is flying, where is it going, uh, what it is feeding on. So, yeah, so that like, but of course I don't know if uh, like uh, if they are using some sense of smell or something and they are say, sensing my presence there and that is disturbing it. So that one cannot take into account. We just assume that it is not disturbing uh, them. Yeah. And these butterflies are very sensitive. So they have all these receptors on their antennae and uh, on their feet as well. So they sense vibrations. So if you are like walking too much, then that also disturbs them. So we would stand still when we are observing them and we have like focused on one individual, then we would follow only that individual. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So yeah, we can go towards our end. Um, this this is a really wonderful session, Ravi. And uh, students, you can follow Ravi on Instagram uh, as well as on Facebook also. On Instagram, you are as a Ravi butterfly, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, and if uh, anyone has questions, please ask. Otherwise, uh, uh, Soumya, uh, you can go for vote of thanks or uh, uh, Ishna, anyone. Thanks, Ravi. Thank you. Thank you, Shilpa. Soumya, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, even I had a question I was thinking about. So in the beginning, he told us that um, butterflies, they choose um, grass as their larval host. So is there a specific reason why they're choosing that? So or each, did I get it wrong? No, no, you got it correctly. So each butterfly has a different species. Uh, sorry, a different species, uh, different species of plant as their host plant. So it is not necessarily grass. It can be a tree. So a butterfly that lays its egg on a mango tree, uh, the caterpillar of that butterfly will not survive uh, on a tamarind tree or uh, like banana leaf. So each butterfly has only their few specific host plants on which they lay eggs on. So that is really important when you are studying the butterfly biology. And the butterfly species that I was studying um, had its host plant as grass. So it wasn't like, um, like if I would have done, a, done this study on some other species, I would have taken an area which has trees because that uh, butterfly lays its eggs on mango trees. So I would have counted the mango trees. Uh, but my species was like feeding on grass uh, leaves. Yeah. So Soumya, even uh, in your balcony or in your garden, if you have curry patta, uh, you can study uh, common mormon. If you have lime, uh, plant in your home you can study lime butterfly or common mormon so you will get 
few other species at your home also if you want to study uh, na their not research kind of study but just in a curious way if you want to see their eggs they are as tiny as pinhead but yes uh, once you are used to that you can get to see those tiny eggs on curry patta or lime uh, and you even uh, bryophyta pan footy we call it in marathi so uh, there are few butterflies so in my home also i have pl- have those plants specially to attract butterflies so you can have get to see those also Thanks. Thank you. So, may you can go for vote of thanks, and we can end the session. Sure, ma'am. Um, so, um, as I like to say that this session did sound very promising to all of us. I was really excited about it, and it actually added a lot to our knowledge. I believe that each of the member from the biodiversity cell they do take a moment. in the everyday life to appreciate the beauty around us but um, we actually were never aware about what all variations and structures why the same structure was given to a leaf or why the butterflies they actually choose the same place so this was a really an informative session and now it has came to an end so i'd like to thank mr ravi jambekar for accepting our invitation and sharing facts with us and also like to thank ms shilpa for choosing the students of sim math school of culinary arts for hosting this unique and really wonderful session and we all really look forward for working frequently now um finally i'd like to thank everyone all the participants who sat very patiently and worked out with us and they turned out to be a great audience so have a great evening ahead take care and hope we and i hope that we'll see you soon again thank uh somebody can you take one or two uh, screen uh, shots uh, and students uh, can you just open up your videos we'll have one or two screen shots uh, please uh, vishnu aapke yahan andhera hai pura ha <laughs> ah, yeah thanks aap kya pura picture hall jaisa mahol karke baith gaye kya theek <laughs> hai some you have a wonderful accent you can go for uh, bbc news or you know that kind of <laughs> thank okay. you ma'am i'll take a picture now yeah ishna vidya can you just come on your videos we want more uh, students on the and let's not wait ravi also more it's more than one and a half hour he is already please open up your videos Okay, you can go ahead. Done. Okay. Um, yes, ma'am. I just took yeah. one. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Yeah. Bye. See you. If there is any feedback, please give me, and I'll be happy to. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Address. Yes.